David was repentant of the things that he had done wrong. Was able to make stuff right with God, but there were still consequences. They still lost the baby. There were still problems that happened. You know, sometimes we think that just because we have a relationship with God that nothing will ever go wrong, and it seems to be very much contrary. It rains on the just and the unjust. It doesn't matter today if you've been perfect all the way up until now. It's 545. You haven't made a mistake all day. Or if all you've done is make mistakes. We have an opportunity here tonight to get reacquainted with the Lord. We have an opportunity to rededicate ourselves to God. Leela can't make that decision, but we can. Something fascinating that rarely heard discussed and it's probably because there's names in the bible and the english translation that just sounds like you have a speech impediment when you say it maybe people skip over it in second samuel 16 and 20 david's son absalom is talking to ahithophel he's a good counsel among you what we shall do and ahithophel said unto absalom Go into thy father's concubines, which he left to keep the house. And all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy fathers of thy father. It says, Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent. Whereat? Upon the top of the house. And Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. I don't think a lot of people put these things together with the prophecy of Nathan. But it was his very own son out of his very own house that went to the top of the house as David did before him. To commit the sin, to take this wife, to, to this concubine of David and in front of all of Israel. See, what we do in our personal life will make itself manifest at some point, if not in our life, in those that we lead. What we do will eventually come to light. So it's our jobs as parents, not only to Leela, but to those that are spiritual babies. It's our job to be mindful of the things that we're doing in private. David walked out on top of this king's house that he had. And he looked out, coveted something he wanted, went and took it. And Absalom decided he would do the same, but for all of Israel to see defiled his father's lineage tried to be a thorn in his dad's flesh and fulfilled Nathan's prophecy yet David was a man that loved the Lord I think like very few of us are capable of loving found forgiveness not only for himself but victory for his wife Bathsheba who bears Solomon See, David began to get some things right in his life. He began to make God the priority again. And what happened? He had another son named Solomon that was able to build the temple that David couldn't build. See, we have choices today with those that are here in spiritual babies and even physical. We have choices today. Are we going to take David's approach to lead Absalom and go on top of the castle, on top of the house, and look out and say, here is the sin I will commit? Or are we going to re get our, rededicate our life to God and hope for a Solomon to rise up and build a temple for the Lord? David had blood on his hands and couldn't do it. But Solomon could fulfill the promise God gave David. As parents and spiritual influences of babies, both physical and spiritual, we must realize that if we take our sin high where the kids see it, they will most likely follow. But if we take our prayer and our worship as a priority, they most certainly will follow. It's worth spending time in a prayer closet while your kids are in the other room. So when they grow up, they remember my mommy, my daddy, they would pray and they begin to get a relationship with God. Maybe they build the temple. Maybe they start the revival. Hallelujah. Maybe they break through. I ask you today, who do you truly serve and which is greater, sacrifice 
or commitment? Whom do you serve? And which is greater, sacrifice or commitment? Psalms 51, 16 and 17 says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Yet the word also says in Romans 12 and 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Romans 6 and 16, it says, Know you not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to him ye obey. We say that we make God our priority. But Paul wrote to Romans and said that if this is the way you're living, then it may not be true. He goes on to say that if you're bound by sin, you're free from righteousness. And if you're bound by righteousness, you're free from sin. It's easy to say that we love God, but do we live that we love God? Notice that Abraham didn't say, I'm going to sacrifice the lad. Hannah didn't say, I'm going to make this great sacrifice, this promise I've waited all my life for and turn around and hand it back. Everybody else was making sacrifices and she was making promises. Everybody else was needing to make sacrifices even in today's time, but we go back and read and it was Abraham that was going to worship. Somebody said something to me recently about sacrifice and about commitment. And it stuck out to me ever since that day. So since it's Father's Day, I'll brag on my dad a bit. Growing up, both my parents worked very, very hard. Most of the time, my dad worked two jobs and ran a paper out. I remember being a kid and not seeing dad a whole lot. Because he would get home between 11 and midnight only to wake back up around 3 and go run a paper route and go straight from there to job 1 and go straight from job 1 to job 2 and get home at 11 or midnight and wake up again at 3 and go out and do the same thing over and over and over and over again. As a spouse and a, a parent, I can tell you just imagining the toll that it would take not only on dad, but on mom as well. I remember moments that they would buy us new shoes and years later I would realize that dad's soles that fell out of his shoe while he was working two jobs and doing another part-time one. Yet it was never phrased as a sacrifice. Even today, if you ask him, he won't say, what a sacrifice I made for my family. He will say, I'm committed to my family. I'm committed to giving everything I have to my family. It didn't make it easy, but it made it wholesome. Abraham had waited all of his life for Isaac. All of his life. And still was willing to be committed to God at all costs. And Isaac had only lived watching Abraham and was willing to be committed at all costs. So I ask again, what is the difference of sacrifice and commitment? What happens with the Lord is that when we give sacrifice, it, it's hard for us. When, when we get our, our income come in and to give tithe back, it's, if we say it's a sacrifice, there's one piece of it there. But when we realize it's just a commitment, we begin to realize that everything I have is God's. The house that I live in is God's. The job that I have, it's God's. The car that I drive, it's God. My family, it's God's. This church, it's God's. Everything I do, it's God's. He can take it away and He's still God. He can remove it all and He's still worthy of my praise. If He never does another thing for me, I can just can't even imagine how good he's been already. If he never does another thing for me, he's been too good to not believe. What if we begin to live for God 
with the passion that David did. David was passionate. He would play music so that the Spirit would drive away from Saul. He was passionate. When everybody else was scared, he said, I'll go fight Goliath. God's already beat a bear, already beat a lion. He's already taken care of me. When my family literally deserted me, said, we don't even remember the other brother. And yet, he was the one who walked out on the house. Oh, be careful when you think you stand. Church, maybe you think you're doing good today, and maybe you are. But be careful when you think you stand. And get recommitted to God. We applaud David for his praise, for his leadership and victories. But his greatest strength was that he was committed to the Lord. Lost the baby and what did he do? Recommit to God. That's a time when most people would say, God, you deserted me. You abandoned me. Stacy right now is 31, 2, 3, somewhere around there in a hospital. And the doctors are saying, when, if she gets out, she's not going to be able to function. Well, what about a liver transplant? I don't think they're going to do it, is what the doctor comes back and says. Well, her family's going to have a decision to make. If God heals her, that's what we're praying for. But what if it doesn't happen? What if, well, I don't know. Then what does she do? Well, David was committed to God, even if I lose it's yours. That's saying something. I don't know where my heart would be if I had to lose Kaya or Dex. And to think about the commitment that Abraham had, that Hannah had, saw her son once a year to go back when everybody else made sacrifice. But because she was committed to God, it wasn't a sacrifice. It was a praise report that here we are all these years later praising even at a baby dedication saying, remember, Hannah waited for the promise. And when she got it, she said, God, it's yours. God, it's yours. What if we could do that today in this place? If we could rededicate our life? What if we could rededicate our commitment to the Lord? Hey, since we started the church, it's been, how can my relationship, God, get better? Closer to God. Recommit today. Can we lift our voices to the Lord all over this place?